We decided to move on to a boat for a few reasons. We wanted to travel, but we wanted to be able to do it in as eco-friendly of a way as possible. So much of the time you can travel just by wind and then you're not using any resources that you don't need to. You're just literally harnessing something that's already there. So that was extremely attractive to us. I'm a heavy duty mechanic by trade. So I've been surrounded by running engines continuously for years. That's why the sailboat, everything's a lot quieter and we can get anywhere in the world on it. So we've been together 10 years, and I think for at least the last five of those years, we've been trying to figure out how we can have more of a nomadic life. Just something that fits our personalities. Living on a sailboat was something that we very much chose every step of the way, did the research about every step of the way before we ended up actually purchasing a boat, and then another boat, and then another boat. The first boat we bought, it was an Ontario 32. We were in it for a year and it was awesome to learn on. It was not awesome to live on through the first winter. That was really tough with the condensation, being in a small boat, and then you throw a big dog in there and it was chaotic at the best of times. <laughs> and tons of people live in boats that size with numerous pets. But with us, it was just like we needed our own space, so we decided we needed something bigger. Number two was a nightmare. <laughs> from the get-go. It was a custom built, which was part of the problem. If we'd known that it was built the way that it was, we wouldn't have purchased it in the first place. We kind of took a risk that we probably shouldn't have taken. I did a lot of fiberglassing. I learned how to fiberglass. I learned that I don't like fiberglass, so that's why I think we really looked at doing a steel boat because we have the tools and the experience to repair that. Well, I was a heavy duty mechanic for the last 17 years and I've always been interested in that kind of stuff. So that's where I learned to, to work with steel quite a bit. And right out of high school, I decided that I was gonna be a welder. I didn't end up finishing my apprenticeship, but I did get enough experience that I can work well with mild steel and I know how to fabricate and how to fit. So pretty much any issues that we have with this boat, we can fix ourselves and we can do it in a way that isn't weather dependent because that's the other issue with fiberglass is you have to have very specific temperatures and humidity levels in order to fix your boat. And steel, it doesn't matter what the weather is, as long as you have a welder, you can do the work. But a steel boat is a lot more upkeep. So you're constantly doing work to the boat to make sure that it doesn't rust through. Any little spots that you notice start to bubble, you have to chip them open and deal with it right away because you'd be surprised what paint can hide. <laughs> Paparamba is a 40 foot Vandestat design Norman 40. It's very comfortable to sail, it's very safe, it's nice to live in. So basically we have a sugar scoop on the back. That's the step that you can get onto the boat. We use that as our main entrance and exit point and then you come into the cockpit or the area where you steer and then as you come forward there's the companion way which is our door basically into the cabin of the boat and then there's a couple of short steps that come down into the saloon or salon or <laughs> living room our boat living room it's a wraparound couch and in behind the cushions is all the storage and there's tons of storage Sort of under the cockpit, there is the aft cabin. It's got a door on it and it's big. The cushion at the longest point is almost nine feet. From there, there's the chart table slash Terran's editing zone and our electrical panels a couple more steps down and it steps into the galley or the kitchen and the head or bathroom is on the right side. And it has a separate shower inside as well. And then as you move forward, you go into the V-berth. And that's our cabin. That's where we are currently sleeping. It's a fairly big room. We've got a wood stove in there as well. It's a cubic mini Grizzly. So our secondary heat source. It is super nice to have on. We fired it up for the first time because we had to get insurance for the boat with the wood stove on it, which was super hard. 
and then we have the Wobasto. It's like a furnace, but runs on diesel. We took a five day live aboard course, I think it was, and that was worth more than anything that we've we've paid for yet. That was just really good to learn how to be safe on the water and to be able to have the confidence to go out on your own and do stuff. We're planning to ideally be out on the water like on anchor or on a mooring for eight months out of the year probably and four months at the dock. And that is mostly because of the limitation of living in a northern climate. Sometimes it hardly gets bright out so there's you're not getting any solar at all. So it's just a lot easier to be at the dock. But when we're out on anchor, we have enough solar that we are charged back to 100% within a couple of hours when we have sunshine. We have a pretty big battery bank. So with the big battery bank, we can charge up all of our devices and not worry about drawing too much. And we can also start the engine to recharge the batteries. As far as water goes, we're in the process of creating a rain collection system so that when it rains, we can collect fresh water. But other than that, we're going back to a marina to refill our water and we start to get low. So we have 650 liters of water on board. So luckily we can go for a long time without having to go back to a marina if we want to. Our goal is to be able to go through the Northwest Passage and over to Northern Europe and then continue on from there. We've got to get a bunch of work done on the boat so that it's safe enough to travel through the Northwest Passage. We need to be able to do our research well enough to feel like we're prepared for that, um, have the skill level sailing wise to feel like we're prepared for that. We have to learn a lot about ice, so we need to get a whole bunch of experience in the next few years and really up our game if we're gonna make it happen. So I'm still working as a photographer. I'm a wedding photographer. Logan has an injury, so he's not able to work full time anymore, but in the next couple of years, we'll probably end up working through the winter to hopefully provide the income that we need to travel for the summertime. I do pick up small jobs. Like if somebody comes to me and they can't get a mechanic out, usually I end up making a little bit of money here or there. I worked a lot and save enough to buy a house, not outright, but get a mortgage. And then we ended up selling that place and buying another place and doing that over again. It's rented out to a couple of very nice people. We didn't really look at it like it was a backup plan or a safety net. We kind of just looked at it like in the future, if we ever want to get back into the housing market, there's no way we can do it without this house. Living on a boat is challenging. It's constantly challenging. If it's not the weather, the wind, the tides, your boat, there's just always something. Most people that let sail will tell you like the highs are higher and the lows are lower and it switches really quick. I have lots of sleepless nights. And that's not just us, that's anybody who lives on a boat that's out on anchor. The weather is the number one thing that dictates what we do and when we do it. Anytime we plan on going anywhere, we have to check the weather the night before and the morning of. The wind, the tides, that kind of stuff. I think it's more work than we thought it would be, but like I don't think we have any regrets about it. And if we did, we wouldn't have bought the third boat. We would have just sold the second one and that would have been it. The benefits that we wanted, we're starting to get now and we're starting to see, and it 110% makes it worth the rest of the struggle. And it's definitely like, as amazing in those moments as we thought, if not more amazing. When we first started out, I pictured more sailing every day and a lot less boat work. <laughs> 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 you know, I, I saw a lot of videos on YouTube and stuff about people sailing around the world and you look at some of them and they're just not realistic. Like they don't show you a lot of what actually happens day to day but also like I know what we're doing, like where we're doing it, it's gonna, it was gonna be more work than, you know, people sailing around the Caribbean. I expected it to be a lot more relaxing, but some of the places that we've gotten to see, that is priceless on its own. I definitely wouldn't trade this in for land life anytime soon. It's really nice having a dog. The first time we had him on our, a sailboat was when he was seven. So, so he's getting old 
For right now, we're just going to shore with him. He's good at letting you know when he needs to go, and uh, and it has been tough. He will not pee on the boat. Most people do have a mat or something, but we do not. If we got to that point where we needed to, I'm sure he would figure it out, but we just have been lucky enough to be able to go to shore. He just makes life better <laughs> by being there. But yeah, it's super hard on a boat. I love living in small spaces. I just feel safer and more comfortable when I'm in small spaces. This is a medium sized sailboat. So it's not like super small, but it's the perfect size for the three of us to live on comfortably. And I still get that feeling of kind of almost like being hugged by my home because it's small. We really do enjoy our smaller spaces because like literally an hour we can have our boat clean and then we can go and do activities. We can go hiking or snorkeling or scuba diving or just exploring. We can do whatever, read a book. And that's yeah. freedoms that we never had before. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. You can also follow Logan and Taryn on YouTube at Wayward Life Sailing. Thanks for watching.